Hey guys, this is Anna with Passions of Paper. I am here with back with you guys today after a pretty long break. Um, I took off the summer to just relax and hang out with my boys. I spent the time um, making a few, uh, just like three, I think, journals for myself. Um, just taking my time and uh, I kind of got a little bit burnout on making journals, so I wanted to give my mind a rest and... Um, I knew I had a really big project coming up. Uh, I've been wanting to do this dark forest theme since basically forever, really. But I knew that this was going to be my next project after doing the pink journals. And um, I knew it was going to be really big. Basically, this is the first journal in a bunch of journals I'm going to be making. And they're all going to be different. Um, maybe not even some of them so much dark, but just cutesy forest and... All the different kinds of things this one's um, heavily fantasy and um, so yeah I took that break and a couple weeks ago I was like I feel like I'm ready to get back into things I was starting to burn my passion came back and I was w wanting to get this image in my head into real life and I did it um, I'm really amazed because if you guys have been following me you've watched my Fox journal the very first uh, flip through I did on YouTube and that was basically what this this right here is what I was wanting back then but I didn't quite know it um, because I was fairly new to junk journals at that time and um, so I've done a ton of studying on other people's dark naturey journals on YouTube and writing down all the things that I liked and trying to piece this image together in my head of what it is I'm really wanting to make um, that would really satisfy me and basically this journal has almost all of it if not all of it <clears throat> so I call this journal the woods just because that's the name that's on there um, it has this beautiful picture done by Mark Potts um, he is um, he sells digitals through the Etsy seller name of Ethra Bell Bohem. So it's this information, well, this information right here. Um, so that's where I got this cover image from. I'm sure you guys are going to really want to know that because that is like, that, that image is just really amazing. It had to be a cover. Um, so... I've got that going on here and I've got all of these loose threads here all surrounding all around the picture. I did buttons and I did um, sewing and I, uh, I don't know, threaded the buttons I guess and I left the tails on and I glued those down. Um, so this is all pretty secure. I stitched through a lot of it to make sure it would stay down but I still wanted it to be kind of pliable and uh, sticking up a little bit um, but of course I don't want it falling off and making messes everywhere so it's pretty darn secure this is a big journal so of course I expect it to last for the whole time it's being used so I do always build my stuff with quality um, this cover took me quite a while to make it is, uh, the base of it is this I think this is upholstery fabric but I'm not entirely sure um, maybe it's just a thick curtain. I don't know. Um, but I got this beautiful fabric and I coffee dyed it. And that gave these beautiful brown edges, frayed edges. I frayed everything <clears throat> to add to the grunge. And then I've got these silk fern leaves on here. And there's also silk ivy leaves back here. Um... And I think that's it for the silk leaves that are on the cover. The uh, silk leaves were grunged up a bit. They were like coffee dyed. But the coffee didn't really take to these ones. Um, as you'll see in here, I started to figure out... I tried a lot of different things to make these grungier and darker. And nothing I was trying was sticking um, until watercolor. Yeah, these are just watercolored. With black watercolor, um, highly watered down liquid, I used the tube watercolor and added a bunch of water to it. 
and just dipped these in or paint brushed them and that stuck and it it makes them sound amazing I love the way that they sound I could do this all day um so these ones are not quite so crunchy but they're the cover and they're mostly covered so it's not a big deal I have my favorite tree charm on here. This is the only one I have of this kind, so I'm a little bit sad about using that up as this will be a for sale journal. Um, but I used a lot of my favorite stuff in here, honestly, because I just wanted this to be that amazing. Um, so here, instead of doing a giant fluffy tassel, this is a very big journal, okay? Um, if you can see my hands around it, probably probably can't really tell, but this is a four inch spine with, it's a four inch mouth when it's tied shut tight, but it does expand to um, six and a half inches when it's open. Uh, it is nine and a quarter inches tall, but it's 10 inches tall if you're counting the ephemera sticking out there. And um, so yeah, this is a four inch journal, which is like right now it's comfortable to hold big but comfortable I can gra easily grab that but if I put a giant tassel on here or even a smaller tassel which I don't really do um, it was just gonna make this clumsier to grab because you're gonna be grabbing that tassel in your hands and it's gonna make it slippery and stuff so I decided instead of doing a tassel <clears throat> I just did I took my signature strings and made them into a dangle Lots of beads, beautiful beads and charms. And it adds a little sound to it too, so I like that. Kind of like what you could hear with my F Fox Journal tassel. So, I really like that. That's got a cute little mushroom bead on there. Some leaf charms. Just different colored beads. Alright, um, there are seven signatures. I always do exposed spines because I absolutely love seeing those. I do them really straight. I'm really good at it, so I like to see it. There's nothing worth covering up there. Um, so on the base of the fabric, I've got this green fabric here. It's kind of like a uh, um, evergreen forest uh, green color. And then I did some... I always forget this is called burlap, I think, um, like mesh ribbon stuff. And then I did, um, this is green creepy cloth, um, which is mostly sewed in, but a little bit loose and could get messed up if it's, this journal's tossed around a lot. So you do probably want to be a little bit careful with that, but it was supposed to like look grungy and messed up. That was like the point of it. It's supposed to look like an overgrown forest. Um, and then here I did this silk, a chiff chiffon silk, I think, uh, ribbon. It goes all the way through, all the way around. So you can pull this cover as tight as you want and nothing will get ruined. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the outside of it. Super grungy. It's supposed to basically take you into a feel, feel like, make you feel like you're going into a dark forest. That's that was my goal is to make you feel really like you're going somewhere with when you get into this thing. So um, I think I've gone over. Oh yeah, there are 476 pages, possibly more, in this journal. Um, I didn't count every single one. I just added the papers that were. I counted the papers that were put into it and times it by four and then sometimes stuff gets added later on that's flippity floppity um so it might be a little more than that but it is 476 pages this was heavily decorated but it's still made for a writer um lots of writing pages but it is way, way more heavily decorated than my usual so there's a lot of fun stuff to go through in here just real quick um i just love doing this just seeing all the pages at a glance. It's just absolutely gorgeous.
and it sounds amazing. Isn't that just beautiful? Definitely my best journal yet. So because of that, I, um, I'm i not ready to sell her just yet. I will get there. She is going to be for sale eventually, possibly within as early as a week. But um, basically what I'm doing is I made a second cover and I'm going to make a smaller version of this for myself. Um, and I think I might make duplicates of all my future dark forest journals because that is my absolute favorite theme um, and I love my work so much that it's hard to just make one for sale so um, I did sort of copy this I ran out of some stuff that I used on here so mine is a little bit different um, but um, it's just gonna be a smaller version of this so hopefully I can pull that off and if I can um, then I'll probably be ready to sell this so in here we've got this, the inside fabric. This is like a velvety material and then this is the back side. As you can see here, it's like the same thing, but this is the back side and this one's, the back side's kind of silky feeling. And those greens are just beautiful. So that is sewed in there. You got a pocket in the front, a pocket in the back. I always do front and back pockets. In the front pocket we have this envelope made out of a book page of evergreen trees and we've got some goodies in there that you can use just some extra stuff I wanted to add in you'll notice a lot of images from Arthur Rackham because uh, he his pictures were kind of my motivation for this journal it says we can never have enough of nature that is so true We've got this cute little owl envelope, and inside of that we have some stickers that you can play around with in this journal. Love these cards from Katie Daisy. There will be several of those throughout this journal. And lots of um, stitching with threads left over, so that'll be fun. That's how I am able to pull off this crazy look here makes makes it look like the journals that the forest is growing out of this journal uh, so here here on this first page we've got thoughts and I did this little spot here that's got like some secret journaling this just opens up like so and then you just fold it back down and then here we've got this beautiful image <clears throat> it's a pocket and there's a journaling card and um, so my papers um, I pull from these are this is from a fern book which was full of beautiful fern imagery this was from this wallpaper book not wallpaper it was like wrapping paper book um, you can take the paper out and it's like it flips as one page but when you open it up it's this big piece of wrapping paper. Um, so I got some of that and this this page was just gorgeous. And if you can hear that, it coffee dyed beautifully. It's a nice thick paper. Then I used this um, like look, look like vintage paper from that I got on Amazon forever ago. And if you notice here, I, uh, I did use fire on my pages, on a lot of the pages in here. It gave this book a nice um, feeling like it survived someone trying to destroy it. Like basically this journal is full of these dark forest secrets of all the creatures and stuff that are in there. And someone um, tried to destroy it so people couldn't get their hands on the secrets of this forest. And it didn't get fully destroyed. It was saved. And... Um, this is like a 15th or 16th century journal, so what is that, 700 years ago? Um, so it's been discovered 700 years later. Um, I say 15th century because I did do some Renaissance pages in here. Some um, I really liked the, 
like this kind of stuff and this stuff here so you'll see more of that throughout there are going to be dragons and fairies and sprites and pixies and um winged horses and elves and um i don't even know like bugs there's just everything so it is a very magical journal um, so these are the silk leaves that I got. Um, they were very bright fall colors, which I did not want in my journal. So this was what happened when I used these. I think these ones actually were coffee dyed. I can't quite remember. I think these ones actually did coffee dye well, whereas the rest of them didn't. So those ones did work really well for that. So they did, they just are in here. Um, this is mostly a green journal, but they're in here to kind of represent decay because in a dark forest there's going to be decay. So here I have a little notepad sewn on the page with um, some flower sack towel there. It's been coffee dyed and we've got just various pages you can write on. This is a vintage book page that I stenciled a fern on. And we've got a fairy stamped here. I did a lot of paint splattering in here with acrylic paints. Um, actually, no, that's watercolor paints. But I did also do um, lots of acrylic paints on the thicker pages. So these thinner pages are watercolor paint splatters of various colors. And then there's lots of digitals to add in the imagery that I needed for this journal. Um, and I used some mushroom stamps, and I did some charcoal edging here. And that's good. Um, this is... I think that's, that's watercolor splatters, but this is acrylic paints back here. And I did some gesso on top, making it really grungy. This is the wrapping paper I was talking about from that book. So, um, it's a really nice texture of paper. It would probably, this part here will hold ink really well from a pen. Um, and this part's just beautiful. I like the dead leaves in the background. And when I coffee dyed it, it kind of stuck to itself, so it made it really grungy when I took it apart. And then these are from books or magazines that have these beautiful um, nature images in them. So here we've got a woman in the forest. I don't know what she's supposed to be, but she's very magical and cool. So we've got dragonflies. This paper turned out so awesome from my burning. Um, it's got all these the edge marks and down here it really does look like a piece of paper from the 15th or 16th century and it just got eaten up by time. <clears throat> And um, this is one of those medieval pages, but there's not really much imagery on there, so you'll see more of that later. Here's a dragon. Paper, the fire curled this in, so that was really cool. There's um, still some pieces that come off. I've played with this paper so much to try to get all the pieces to come off. Most of the stuff just is intact now, but every now and then a piece does come off. Um, as you can see right here, this little piece. So um, just be mindful of that. Here we've got, um, I'm not sure if that's Arthur Rackham or someone else, but I put that on a paper bag, thick paper bag from Kroger, um, and that has been painted on to give a nice writing surface. And here we've got a leaf charm. And then this fabric that I stamped is, is the pocket. I added some eyelash yarns to this little tag. This tag is glued on as a pocket. And we've got this little scrap of paper. And I did a wax seal here that I colored in so you can see the leaves easily. Here's those um, ivy leaves I was talking about on the front cover. Got a couple of them on here. And I did a fern stencil here and then some sewing. I made this into a pocket. This is 
Arthur Rackham, as you can see there. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. This says it was from 1910. This is not, this was a digital. This is not a real image. Um, all of these images will be digitals. I did a lot of crazy stitching on, on most of the tags. Most of the tags will have that. Or I guess that's a journaling card, not a tag. So yeah, you can see here this medieval scene here. Or renaissance scene. I don't know. Maybe it's medieval. I'm not sure. Got like a creepy looking sprite thing there. And a pocket here that's waiting to be filled up. Some of that wrapping paper. Here I've got, um, I made a pocket here. And then I've got this, um, fern leaf cut out that I uh, um, I did distress spray on and uh, here we've got a little reindeer and some fabric there stitching here with this fabric here and in here we've got like a bookmark kind of tag with some beautiful fibers on it and this little girl is a fairy and we've got a leaf charm and some cheesecloth that can be written on the back. Now, and uh, this is book paper. I made a master board with book paper and I used acrylic paints on it and did splashing with the acrylic paints. So anytime you see that, that's what that is. It's used probably a few times throughout the journal. And then this is the other side of that paper that's acrylic painted with gesso. And I tried to do some spots that are like thick so you can feel them, feel the textures. Here we've got a, an acorn charm. I love this tree digital. Beautiful colors and creepy too at the same time. This is a tree house from a vintage book. Here we've got, it's a postcard, but the uh, imagery just fit in really well. Um, we've got a little owl down here, and then I did some eyelash yarn here on the edges of that pocket. Did a cluster here with some fibers and some, what's this stuff called? The drywall tape, I think and some mushrooms and it says be brave and these are always going to be these spotters are always going to be watercolor there's a katie daisy card beautiful owl always seek mystery i like the way that he's just poking out at you like keeping watch and i have no idea what is going on in that picture but it's creepy in a dark forest with a tree and mushrooms so it belongs probably all of Arthur Rackham's pictures could be used in this um, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful and this journal is a great show of that this journal is purposefully not perfect I call it perfectly imperfect um, it's grungy on purpose because messy is beautiful Here I just put um, some writing paper on this fern page. Love this crow. This digital kit, I'm going to put all the digital kits in the description box below. So make sure you check that to get that information. Um, this digital kit has some really great images. This is um, art paper. So anytime you see the acrylic painting, it's always going to be on this thicker paper. And then I've got all these leaves on there and packaging paper this is from a magazine I think there's our first dragon no that might be our second dragon I think the, there was a red one first this beautiful fox here's an elf elven home and maybe a map to figure out how to get there 
I love the color of this brown paper. This was one of, you know how when you open the book cover, there's that paper on the inside that you see before you get to the actual book pages. That's what this is. This was beautiful and made perfect journaling paper. So this was um, another evergreen tree book page that I turned into an envelope. And inside we've got a scrappy notepad and a journaling card. More fibers here. This stuff is really soft and fuzzy. This is a journaling page from a 1966 um, real person's journal or diary or something, a yearbook or something like that. So it's fun to read stuff like that. This is um, just green paper. I coffee dyed and did paint, paint, paint splatters too. And this envelope is something I just got recently from some junk mail. And I hope that they keep sending me junk mail because I love this envelope. I've got two of them now. This is a beautiful journaling card. There's another one of those images. I did a dragon seal wax stamp there and it did the gold marker on it. Here we've just got a fake book page that I bought from Sheen a long time ago. Just beautiful because of the ferns. There's a lot of ferns in this journal because that's one of my favorite plants. They have a very beautiful green coloring to them and they're overgrown and the overgrown look is my favorite when it comes to plants. So here we've got a fabric pocket sewn on and some eyelash yarn there and I got a little leaf charm. And here we've got a sticker you can use and just a little piece of paper to write on. Here is a um, little tree fairy from an evergreen with some fibers coming out of there. On here we have a bottle of fairy dust. It's attached to this clip so it does come off. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's fun to listen to. And these beads have a nice shimmer to them. Um, we've got this playing card that um, I made and then I... Um, oh, what's the word? I brunched up and we've just got this piece of scrap paper here. They don't stay too well in that pocket, so that's why I use that clip. <clears throat> distress, that's the word. I distressed this card and aged it. That's from the Elven page, so this stuff must have something to do with elves. There's that. Another owl again, keeping watch on you. This journal has eyes. This page got grunged up in the coffee dyeing, and I love it. I love how it turned out. This was interesting. It's like some kind of teepee thing. I'm not sure what it's for. Maybe it's probably, it's probably not in here. But um, This is packaging paper that's been grunged up. More of the acrylic paint. And I just sewed some textures on. Um, and some charms. Those beautiful crows. I love this paper. It's gorgeous. In all things of nature, there is something of the marvelous. And there's a frog. Nice, uh, beautiful colors in that frog. And we've got this moth paper here making this tuck spot. And in here we've got a reindeer envelope. 
with a journaling card. Sorry, I'm not even paying attention to where I'm holding stuff. This is kind of a big journal, so it's a little bit hard to stay in frame. Of course, all my journals are big journals, so it really shouldn't be anything new, should it? So we've got another journaling card with that paper bag on the back. I love these red leaves. They're beautiful. And those were um, stained. And then on here, we've got this little tag with these beautiful fibers. And then it has a couple of pages sewn onto it. Because the pa paper I used for the backing had this little piece hanging off of it. And I was like, that needs to hold something. So I turned it into a little miniature book. And it's got the stitching all the way around. And this is like an elf, but with antlers. So I don't know if that has a name, but she's really cool looking. I love the way this paper turned out. I don't even know what I did. I can't remember if I used inks or food coloring or what, but that turned out cool. Um, or like this might have been sitting on my green paper, the green copy paper I showed you guys, and it might have sucked up the green from that paper because I know that that green, that paper did leach a little bit when I coffee dyed it. So I think that's what happened actually. This was just coffee dyed sitting in between two sheets of that green paper. And it came up with this awesome green brown color. There's uh, browns throughout too. Um, so we've got this fabric here. I don't know what that's called. Like some kind of net type of stuff. And a stamped fairy. And we've got some eyelash trim in here. With this little scrap piece of paper sewed on. And then the eyelash trim's coming out. It's the long eyelash trim. It's really soft. Here I've got a pocket out of this paper and um, just added some embellishments. It says notes and I've got a little mushroom. I love these tiny little mushrooms so I've used these all throughout the journal. And inside we've got this beautiful uh, little notebook. It's skinny and tall. Um, I did a wax seal of, the, of that tree there. That turned out beautifully. And so you can untie this. And that wax seal is holding it on so it won't lose you won't lose those straps. And here we've got a little fairy girl, absolutely adorable, sitting guard over those flowers. And we've got I think these are both stickers that you can use. And just some various pages inside. So I'll retie that later. Um, this is a beautiful journal um, kit too. I love, especially this page. This is one of my favorite pages. And here's another page where the fire ate into it a bit. And I used that so you could get a glimpse of this fern leaf here. I used this texture paste to give it, to make it 3D. And uh, then paint it over it. And so you can see that coming up a couple pages ahead. And I did some, so I don't know if you can see that, but it does stick out. <clears throat> I did some fern stenciling, and just this is um, the acrylic paints here. Um, and then I sewed some ferns on, some little fern leaves. Here I did... Um, an ivy pattern with the charcoal. I added this page almost purely just for the texture. It's so, so thin and kind of fragile and it just feels really good. Um, so there's that. More digitals. Cool knife or sword. Lots of writing space. This one's really cool too. This was from a book, I think, and I turned it into pockets. In this pocket, we've got an envelope. Um, 
This is the way the digital was. It was just upside down. I don't understand that. But that's how it was. Inside we've got some goodies that you can use. This tree, this is why I picked this picture. Like, I love this side of the paper too. And it really ties in with these yellow leaves. But this image here of this tree... That is gnarly and really creepy. That's like almost looks like blood is seeping out of it, but that's just the tree. And this is the other side of the, of the picture, so you can see some more of it right in here, coming up in here. Um, almost like that's a different plant that's attached itself to the tree. kind of creepy like it's being attacked <clears throat> beautiful mushrooms on that digital I love this picture sorry this picture could pretty much just sum up this journal um so more dragons and dark birds and moons that paper here's a big journaling card very, very beautiful artwork. I absolutely love that artwork. And it feels really good with this packing. This is packaging paper that I painted with a very watered down brown acrylic paint. This is a pocket from a shirt. It's the, like, it was just the right grain, so it's really soft. Um, but it is pretty loose, kind of stretchy. But it works out pretty well, I think. Here we've got um, another fern. Um, that I like stamped on with that texture paste and painted it was like the leftovers of the first fern that you saw so it doesn't have quite as much and two more journaling cards and here we've got a picture of this all um, this table made out of all like the outsides of a tree really rustic and beautiful. I would love to be able to sit there and eat my lunch. This is a cutout of a fairy that I painted. It was cut out on this shimmery paper and then I just painted over it with this. Um, I try to make the color like a dark berry color. Um, it came out a little bit more purple even though I only used red and black. But she still looks really awesome. And right here I've got this little baby paper clip that's holding this here closed. Inside we've got this little fairy. So he's like hiding in a tree looking down on her. I thought that was really cute. Um, what's funny is I did, I actually did all this and then later realized what this looks like. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. It was all an unintentional. Here we've got some nice mushrooms. And then I did some creepy cloth down here to try to make it look like grass. And then in this pocket, we've got... I did some collaging on this part. And this is just a piece of stationery with some of those leaves. These leaves have the best sound of all the leaves. And then I have this little, a little fun piece of paper on there to give it some contrast and um, frame we've got some bugs here because of course there's going to be a lot of bugs in a forest I don't care what forest you go to there's bugs in it and here we've got a stamped fairy I use this lightish color to make them look like they're just a shadow And here I've just got this grunged up piece of paper. These can each individually rip off and you can glue those on anything. And then use the rest of it for journaling. I love this deer. He looks so peaceful. But his antlers are like trees. And he's covered in moss. And he's got, like, these plants growing on top of his head. 
Uh, we've got this water hen from, um, what's her name that everybody's obsessed about? I can never remember her name. And um, we've got these beautiful dried leaves, or dead leaves, from Elm Oak, Beech, Chestnut, and Sycamore trees. Um, and then here I made a belly band out of this fabric. And we've got um, a moose, I think. A bull, but a bugling bull elk. Okay, so that's an elk. And I sewed this giant fern leaf. I got this fern leaf plant, but they were the, the leaves were mostly too big. Only one of them, um, a couple of them, were small enough to use. So that's just another stationary piece that can be used. And I did some grungy stamping in here. Here we have a dead leaf mantis, which is super cool looking. And we've got journaling cards in here. This says grasses that creep. So I felt like that along with the black paper. Uh, the black paper fit in here. Um, this is just regular white coffee paper, 18 pound, really crunchy paper that I coffee dyed right next to that 1966 journaling page. So a lot of the ink took on onto this paper, even though the writing on that paper is still perfect. It somehow also lent some to this paper and it looked really awesome. So I included that. Added some journaling space here. We've got a fun dragon. This is another children's book page here. So it's got color on one side and black and white on the other. And with this pen here, we've got um, a book page envelope that was distress sprayed. And I put some goodies in there. There's stickers and writing stuff. And we've got this journaling card that actually opens out for some more journaling space. I like using bobby pins because they don't catch when you pull them on and off like safety pins sometimes do, or not safety pins, paper clips sometimes do, and I don't want to destroy this kind of stuff. so. Uh, that is why that is used. Here we've got some um, fibers that I used. I sewed them together, hand sewed throughout. Um, this is like three pieces, as you can see, put together. And um, I kind of try to make it look like a tree. This page here is so beautiful. It's the same one as that crow paper I was telling you I really like. And I just did some grungy acrylic painting here. We've got a little sprite there. Crow. Another dragon. Some leaves. Did a cluster here with these cute little bunnies. But it's kind of dark in there. and They're on alert. They know there's predators about. Here I just did a piece of tree bark paper, not tree bark paper, but a picture of tree bark <clears throat> from a book and just did that. If you notice her eyes, they are really cool. Two different colors and like two totally different designs and she's got some wicked hair growing out of her craziness going on in there. She's welcoming you though. I did um, another kind of fiber here. I tried to use, I have so many greens and browns fi of fibers that I tried to use all different stuff all throughout because I buy a lot of this stuff and I let myself buy a lot of this stuff because nature themes is my favorite so I know it'll get used up. Another journaling card with crazy stitching.
This I turn into a pocket with this scrappy piece of paper. And we've got this beautiful journaling card here. And now we're to the other side of all of that. This is a Katie Daisy um, card. It says, Be Astonished. Love that moth. Absolutely beautiful. And here's where it says, The Dead Leaf Mantis. That's how I knew, because I don't really know bugs that well. Um, so here I did this grungy painting with, like, finger painting and tried to make a tree. I did some grungy stamping in there and I did some texture paste here. So there's a lot going on in here. And then we've got a moth here. It says superior specimen and some uh, some of that net fabric. A rusty paper clip here which that's what I was talking about. You gotta be careful. And then this flips open. It's just a little book with different ferns stenciled on. And then in here we've got, there's that uh, paper from that master board I was talking about. So it sounds kind of like cardboard. It's pretty thick. I did several layers of book pages. And then it's got that, vin that fake vintage paper on the back here. And then we've got these beautiful fibers up here. It says stay curious and, and there's a picture of a woman who is traveling around the dark forest because she's too curious to stay out. But maybe she's second guessing herself. She kind of looks like she is. It's starting to get dark. She should probably get going home. It is not safe in the dark forest. There's some more of that wrapping paper. Creepy spider. This was just acrylic painted and then gessoed over. And then I did these ivy leaf on top. Or ivy vine. Or just vines, I guess. And, um... I think this was... A spray. But I don't fully recall doing that. But it looks like a spray, so... Yeah, I think that was a distress spray. And then that beautiful paper. This paper got a lot of burning done to it. Turned out really cool. Looks really old. And I got another little scrappy notepad here. With my favorite leaves. And some cheesecloth. Just some scrapbook paper there. This is from a vintage nature book. 1970s, I believe. Uh, this dragon has tree antlers, so that's cool. Here's one of those ferns that actually was small enough to use on the page. <clears throat> I love this page, it's beautiful. Got this journaling card and the um, burlap, it's that bur the burlap mesh, mesh stuff that I turned into a pocket, and, um, <clears throat> I used some, um, some of the fibers from fraying my fabrics, and just used that as a border up here. Um, this here, we've got pieces hanging down, and it was already like that, just naturally, and I was like, I really love how those stick out of the book, kind of like they're growing creepy tree limbs. And so I did do some stitching um, throughout to make sure these can never come all the way off. They will always be able to stay like that because you know how this stuff can fray and fray and fray and never stop fraying until you've got no fabric left. So I did some extra stitching to make sure those will stay in. This is a mama bear and two cubs. My son says this is me, this is him, and this is his baby brother. And we've got this picture of um, these woods where it's snowing at nighttime with moonlight shining down on them. I love the coloration of this picture. 
Now we've got the other side of those pages. This is a postcard about the Blue Hole in Castalia, Ohio. Um, you would think that since I live in Ohio, I've heard of that, but I have not. So that's interesting. But the card, I, I really love the artwork in that card. It's gorgeous. So I was hoarding that for myself, but it really did belong right here in this journal. It was too perfect. And I've got this fairy here. And another woman with antlers playing some flute music. Beautiful mushrooms. And this lady, another lady with antlers. Lots of beautiful imagery. And here we've got this um, mushroom washi paper. And I made this teensy tiny... I'm going to have to prop that up. I made this teensy tiny little notebook. So that's fun. Um, there, that should help. Alright, more burnt paper. We've got another one of those um, tags here with all that fiber inside. So fun to play with. There's so much st different stuff in here. And we've got this cute little baby sitting in a tree with this bird. And then on here it says, together we will sit and rest. And then there's some little mice down there trying on shoes. Interesting. Did some crazy stitching. got these this is a different kind of leaf it's like a different kind of fabric I'm not sure what these are but I didn't like those as much so I didn't use too many of those and here we've got some little fairy sisters they know they're being watched by a human so they're a little bit wary and I just did some grungy stuff all throughout all the different um, fibers and textures paints Lots of stuff going on on this page. And this is that thick Kroger paper bag. Uh, very nice to write on. I've written on paper bags. They're fun. Especially the thick ones. And here, this is a really thin magazine page. Like, super thin. So I backed it with some newsprint paper. And this newsprint paper is um, a paper that I do for most of these, a lot of these digitals, um, because it, it hold, it sucks your ink up your pen really, really well. So your pen looks really good on this kind of paper, but also if you're a lefty like me, you're going to want paper that really sucks the ink up. Um, so you're not smearing in your beautiful journal. So I did use a lot of this, but also honestly, I've written on all of my types, different types of papers. Once they're printed on, it takes the sheen, some of the sheen away, and it helps the ink absorb better. Or maybe it's just the kind of paper that I buy, but I have never smeared on any of my printer papers, and I use like maybe 10 different kinds of printer paper. I think this moth is super awesome. We've got this journaling card here with some cheesecloth. This pocket um, is fun. I just did some stenciling on this right here and a word stamp, a script stamp, and then that opens up. And I continued the stencil so it looks like it's the same thing on both parts. And then I went heavy on the script stamp right there as if this was secret journaling. And we've got another owl watching you. Beautiful papers. Just got a tag here with some fabric for the top. We've got a shrew here. Um, this little envelope here is open on both sides. I use these little mini paper clips on them. There's nothing inside, so it's just waiting for you to store some secret things. 
This is from a, a tree book. This is that winged horse I was talking about. He is so cool. This guy. He's awesome. I almost made him my cover. But he wasn't the full face. If he was like the full face, he might have ended up being my cover. But I don't regret using that tree deer. Here we just got a grungy card. Beautiful picture. I did another um, leaf stamp, but I don't like this leaf stamp as, or stencil. Sorry, stencil as much because it really looks like a feather to me. But it's part of my fern stencil kit, so I'm assuming it's some kind of fern, not a feather. This is another one of my favorite images. Um, this was from that same kit as the cover, and so I'm assuming that this was also done by Mark Potts. But I don't know for sure because he also adds um, vintage book images in his collections. So, um, but it's just beautiful. That also almost ended up being my cover. And in the future it could possibly end up being a cover. I love the way the fire burnt a hole through here. But it's like not it's just it's a hole that was really cool um on here i did this fabric pocket i did i sewed some um eyelash trim to it and um i left it empty because i just think it's beautiful having this look like it's sitting in the pocket i love this baby this is really pretty especially after burning it it looks really good this is um, a family tree of bugs, so that was really cool. Perfect for this journal. Got a journaling card there. Nice waterfall and that nature scene. This is more of that thin paper that I, the other one was backed with. This one's not backed because I like both sides. Did some edging on here. This is from a children's book. I grunged it up and distressed it to make it look old. While I was coffee dyeing it, I was crumpling it and, re and uncrumpling. And then I recrumpled and uncrumpled. And I probably did it too many times, so a little bit of it did rip off. This is very thick paper. Kind of almost fabric-y. It's so thick. Um, so it just feels really good. So I did make some faux vintage tape to tape that piece back on. And there was just a little right there so I tape that on and there is another owl this one's a little more friendly but there's he's still there and maybe his friendliness is is a ruse maybe he's making you think he's friendly so you don't aren't so wary of him watching you this was more of the paper bag I turned it into a pocket page and we've got this beautiful journaling card um, by Arthur Rackham again. Got some, I think those are, yeah, badgers. Badgers can be some nasty little creatures. We've got a nice little scene, scene playing out there. Another dragon. Got a squirrel stealing food from the birds. Sorry, birds, this is not a nice forest. A couple of journaling cards here. We've got some fibers going on here. And um, this little tree charm. It's beautiful paper. This is so gorgeous with this fairy. I love the greens and the golds in the background. Another Arthur Rackham card. Here we've got a mushroom wax seal. 
on top of one of those little mushrooms and I did some fiber. I try to make this fiber um, like a tree so it comes down and this is where it goes out into the ground and then underneath the ground you've got all these roots. I don't, I don't even know if that's picking up. Um, you can see how it comes out like these are the roots. And this is the part where it goes down into the ground. It slopes out at the base and this is tall. And then up here is where the, tr the branches are. And I just did some collaging, a collaging cluster on there. This is not an owl, just a creepy cat staring you down. And now we've got a bat. The other side of that paper, this beautiful tree. Uh, there's a little black bird in there. Um, this is more of that, the paper that I uh, did acrylic painting on. Um, I uh, sewed this picture, this was originally just a big, t I made it into a big tag, so it's backed, but um, I just, it wasn't going to fit in a pocket, so I decided to just sew it on as a giant pocket, and I've got all kinds of stuff in here, all these different beautiful art cards for journaling, all backed. So just lots of stuff that you can play around with. Write down your to-dos on, your grocery shopping lists, weird things that your children say, all kinds of fun ways to use those cards. Just got a little piece of scrap paper here. I'll sometimes use those cards to like write the date and then list just like what I'm doing. Like what kind of shows am I into at this moment? What kind of music am I into? What are things that I'm learning? What parts about life am I loving? What am I hating? And then like every month or so I'll fill one of those out. And so I can always just quick do like a quick flashback to a certain part of my life and see all the different things that are going on. So in a journal that's decorated that is made for writers, you absolutely have to have a writing board. So what I did here is I just took that, um, what's that cardboard called? The stuff that people like to make um, book covers out of. And I used my um, paper that was like for my, over, the my back, I lay it on my desk. I don't know what it's called. Some people call it cleanup paper, I guess. And then... That way all my inking, overspray, and stuff ends up on this paper. Gets super cool looking. And so that is my writing board. I keep it very basic and simple because a writing board has to be flat or else you can't actually write on it. And I also do the thinner cardboard because if it's thicker, um, when you put it under the paper, it bumps it. The, the thicker it is, the more it's going to bump it out. So the thinner it is, the more you can really just tuck it in there like another piece of paper. But it's still very secure. You can write through it and it'll block all the bumpiness from my decorating or your decorating. So that just fits in the back pocket here. And that is it. Wow. This is my longest video yet. My longest flip through. Whoops. But it is also the most I've ever done in a journal. This is a big one, guys. She is big and she is heavily decorated, but still so much room for writing. And she's amazing. So, like I said, she will eventually be for sale. I just don't know for sure yet when. My goal is to have her up for sale within a week. And, um... I will list my Etsy shop in the description box and you can follow me on Etsy so that you'll hopefully get notified when she does get listed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be, after I make my own version, mini version of this journal, I will be um, starting another forest themed journal. Um, I don't know how much fantasy stuff will be in it. Or if it'll be dark. I haven't decided on the exact theme of that yet. But it's going to be following in these steps. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a great day. See you next time.